Imagine what it'd be like to live on a planet untethered from its star. No daytime, no night, no sunrise, no sunset. Just the stars in the sky and the universe itself spiraling away and away and away. Adrift in the void. We can only imagine that such a life would be lonely, quiet, and probably that a person who'd only known such a place would have little conception of the universe as we know it. Life in a place like that would be unlike anything we can imagine. But we're not just talking about a work of fiction. We aren't talking about a pure hypothetical here, and we aren't talking about something that might exist on the fringes as some fluke anomaly. In fact, it's really the opposite. According to the latest cutting-edge research, there may be billions or even trillions of such planets in our galaxy alone, and some of them might just be able to support life. These are rogue planets, the free-floating exoplanets that drift forever among the stars, completely and utterly untethered to any future but their own. Rogue planets are, at their most fundamental level, just planets. It's uh, mind-blowing, we know. But like any other planets, they've also got a few key attributes that set them apart from other celestial bodies. In order to qualify as a planet, a body has to be large enough that its gravity forces it into a spherical shape. This is all concentrated around a strong gravitational center. It's also got to be big enough that its gravity has cleared out anything of a similar size that would be near it, including big moons or even other planets. See by pulling such an object closer and closer until they collide and form something new, or by flinging each other away. But usually, planets also have to meet a third criteria. They've got to orbit a star, just like the planets in our own solar system orbit the sun. A rogue planet hits all of those criteria, except for the last one. Rather than orbiting a star, they travel their own path, careening through space without being in anything else's orbit. They might be pushed or pulled in various directions by passing stars, nudged in one way or the other on what would otherwise be a straight line journey, but until and unless they happen to be captured in a star's orbit, they fly through their galaxy utterly unchecked. They, like other planets, can be rocky or gaseous. The rocky planets, like any others, can feature things like tectonic plate movement from a molten mantle and core. And all of them, hypothetically at least, can collect moons on their way, forming a sort of intergalactic posse spiraling through the void. As best we can tell, rogue planets will form in one of two ways. In the first option, they start out by forming like any other planet, starting out as tiny particles and specks orbiting around a young star in a donut-shaped disk. Eventually, some of those specks start colliding with each other, and if they collide relatively gently, they might fuse together into a slightly bigger speck. Do that, enough time's over, over the course of a few billion years, and these specks will grow into a large enough speck that it starts pulling other specks towards it, combining and combining again while clearing out the track in front of them. In a rogue planet's case, this process goes along as normal, until a gravitational interaction between the soon-to-be rogue planet and another planet in its solar system goes awry. In this sort of unstable interaction, the two planets in question, as well as their star, pull and push on each other until the future rogue planet is pushed on a trajectory that is moving it away from its host star. If the planet's moving fast enough, it could basically just float away because the gravity of its host star just isn't strong enough to rein it back in. And for the record, it's not just other planets that can cause this sort of slingshot effect. A black hole could do it, or a collision with a heavy enough celestial object, or a passing star or star system, or even another rogue planet recruiting the new kid in the neighborhood to its gang. In a slightly different mechanism, a planet could also be flung outward if its star were to explode in a supernova at the end of its life, functionally the equivalent of shooting the planet out of some sort of giant galaxy cannon. The other option is for rogue planets to form similar to the way that stars do. Though it may come as a surprise, stars do form in the same way as planets do, when clouds of space dust and gas coalesce into a larger and larger cloud. But unlike stars, these planets never reach a size where the forces of gravity at their center prompts the fusion of hydrogen and helium gas. These rogue planets are sometimes referred to as sub-brown dwarves or failed stars. But we here at Astrographics, we're not going to call them failures when we can call them rogues, are we? In this case, the resulting rogue planets can be a good bit larger than those that might have formed from a planetary disk around a star, but they're also probably going to be a lot less active in moving across their galaxy. Instead, they sit out in the middle of nowhere until, or unless, something with a meaningful amount of gravity comes careening by and nudges them into motion. The first thing to understand about the plight of the rogue planet is how cold it's likely to be. Stuck way, way out in the vacuum of space, getting no more solar energy from any of the galaxy's stars 
than the Earth might get from Alpha Centauri, there's nothing to keep them above the temperature of empty space, which is estimated within our solar system to be about 2.7 degrees Kelvin, which is about minus 270 degrees Celsius or minus 455 degrees Fahrenheit, also known as bloody cold. Out in empty space, away from a star, the temperature is probably closer to absolute zero, with any slight warming being a result of cosmic background radiation. Technically speaking, it's not even correct to state that truly empty space has a temperature at all, but let's all break our brains on that particular trick of mathematics some other day, shall we? The point is, rogue planets are probably really, really cold on the surface, and that brings up another point of discussion, ice. Comets are thought to be innumerably common in interstellar space. Not so omnipresent that they'd be smashing into a rogue planet every day, but more than frequent enough that they'd likely encounter a rogue planet with a frequency that, when viewed on the timescale of millions of years, seems to happen fairly often. They're also small enough to be easily ensnared by a rogue planet, which will often mean crashing into it. And comets, big watery bodies in deep space, plus incredible cold, means ice. On rocky rogue planets, ice is probably a relatively common feature. But extreme cold on the surface doesn't necessarily mean that a rogue planet will be frozen all the way through. Even on rogue planets, tectonic activity may be sustained for up to several billion years, and it's theoretically possible that it could continue for a bit longer. The presence of a molten mantle like Earth has got underneath its crust brings up a whole range of possibilities, from geothermal energy release bringing the surface temperature in some places above the melting point of water, to a resulting magnetosphere like Earth has. And for those who know where we're we going with this, just hold on for a moment longer. We'll absolutely be getting to that critical question in just a bit. Now, of course, it's important to remember that a planet that's floating rogue today isn't necessarily condemned to be forever alone. Just like many of them were cast out of their solar systems by a passing planet or star, they can also stumble across another solar system on their way through the cosmos. In fact, they can be captured by just about anything. The lucky among them will go to a good home with a good family. That is to say, they'll be captured by a stable star in a stable solar system and slot neatly in among whatever planets that star's already got after a few million years of careening around and trying to get its orbit in check. Others might be ensnared by a black hole, pulled into its orbit and eventually devoured in its maw. Particularly unlucky ones might just fly straight into a star or smash into another rogue planet like a bowling ball crashing through pins. Or if they don't happen to run into anything at all, they might pass straight out of their home galaxy into intergalactic space with their futures entirely unknown. And it's worth noting that it is entirely within the realm of possibility that any one of the members of our solar system might have once been a rogue planet, even possibly Earth itself. We're pretty sure in the modern era that we know how all of the planets in our solar system came to be, but there's always room for a little bit of doubt and nuance in astrophysics, and our home planet's origin story, or that of any of the planets that uh, we all know and love, might contain some twists and turns that we just don't know about. We also could very well get a visit from a rogue planet tomorrow. After all, if it's not emitting light of its own, we probably wouldn't be able to see it coming until it already showed up for dinner. And the Earth could still become a rogue planet one day, either accidentally due to a passing something that would disrupt our orbit, or intentionally, as some scientists have suggested that a far future civilization might do that in order to keep our planet from being swallowed by the sun as it naturally expands near the end of its life. Don't worry, it's a really, really long time away. As for how frequently rogue planets occur, the answer is actually pretty shocking. According to research published in the summer of this very year, 2023, jointly done by NASA and Osaka University in Japan, rogue planets may outnumber planets orbiting stars at a rate as high as 20 to 1 in the Milky Way, which would imply up to multiple trillions of rogue planets in our galaxy alone. It is a stunning figure based on a nine-year study that used a technique called microlensing, which observes the warping of light from a star as it bends around an object that sits between it and Earth. A second, more conservative estimate suggests that rogue planets may only outnumber orbiting planets by 6 to 1, but even still, that is a lot of planets. According to NASA, a majority of those rogue planets tend to be around the size of Earth, since they aren't bound to their star quite as firmly via gravity as their heavier neighbors. And quite a few might be discovered soon using the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, which could begin its work by or before May 2027. Now, according to NASA, the telescope might find as many as 400 rogue planets, and even they may only be a prelude to the discoveries to come. 
As of now, a couple of rogue planets have already been discovered. One discussed in a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal in 2018 is believed to feature a magnetic field about 4 million times stronger than Earth's, producing some truly spectacular auroras like those found on the Earth's poles. The planet is located only some 20 light years from Earth, close enough to observe with the National Science Foundation's very large array. At a size larger than Jupiter at a surface temperature of 825 degrees Celsius, it's not a place we're going to visit anytime soon, and it's closer to being a brown dwarf, which is basically a failed star. And in fact, most rogue planets that we've seen, or at least think we've seen, are also riding this line of being very nearly brown dwarfs. But they're still probably rogue planets, and it's pretty cool that we're starting to find them. All right. A moment ago, we mentioned the possibility of a few key things on a rogue planet. Geological activity leading to geothermal exhaust to a rogue planet's surface, which, when combined with the possibility of ice-covered worlds, inherently raises the question of whether there is liquid water. And where there is liquid water, there might just be life. One way this could happen is if a planet happened to be kicked out of its solar system early in its star's formation. If this was how a planet's expulsion went down, it's highly unlikely that its young star could have stripped away the planet's layer of hydrogen, which itself is a great way to trap heat inside the planet's atmosphere. Depending on how hydrogen-rich an atmosphere is, it might be able to keep the surface of a rogue planet warm just by capturing the radioactive heat that the planet continually emits. With that sort of warmth, the planet could sustain oceans on its surface, replicating conditions where lab-cultivated microorganisms have been proven to survive or even thrive. And then there's the possibility of life inside a rogue planet, underneath a surface of ice or even solid rock. As strange as it might seem, life does not need an atmosphere in order to survive, nor does it need to ever see the surface of the worlds it inhabits or ever receive a single photon's worth of light from a star so close as to be called a sun. As far as we can tell, life as we know it can survive with just liquid water, heat, and the essential other chemicals that make life occur. That's a set of conditions that could be sustained around geothermal vents or other sources of energy coming from within a rogue planet itself, perhaps in caves deep underground where liquid water bubbles up from hot springs, or in thin but survivable subsurface seas hugging to a planet's surface encased in a far thicker outer shell of solid ice. Another more likely possibility would be that life could survive or even thrive on a rogue planet's moon. Take moons we can find right here in our solar system, like Europa or Enceladus, where scientists believe we have our best chance at finding life away from Earth. On those moons, liquid water is believed to flow under a thick crust of ice, but not because it's being heated by the sun. Instead, friction between the moon's interior and the planet's orbits keeps the planet's core heated to the point that it can sustain geothermal activity basically indefinitely. The problems for a world like this would arise when the moon strayed too far away from its planet to keep those sorts of friction effects going. But depending on the rate at which the moon separates from its host planet, that might take place on a timescale of multiple billions of years. In all cases, we've got to point out that although life, as far as we know, isn't particularly probable, it's also not unfeasible to imagine that the building blocks of life could exist on a fair proportion of rogue planets. When NASA's Cassini spacecraft flew through one of the geysers that burst forth from Enceladus, it was able to identify numerous organic molecules that scientists believe are the precursors to life. And if that's true on rogue planets too, it stands to reason that the addition of some deep-sea hydrothermal vents could be enough to light the spark. After all, that's the leading theory on how life came to be on Earth. Even if we imagine that the combination of factors is fairly rare, according to that study we mentioned earlier, we might be talking about a rare phenomenon among trillions upon trillions of worlds. When dealing with numbers of that size, what does rare really mean? If you say that there's a one in a million chance that a rogue planet would have a perfect condition for life, well, you're talking about as many as 10 million planets just in the Milky Way alone. And finally, We've got to talk about the concept of panspermia, a hypothesis about the origins of life that suggests that life doesn't just exist all over the universe, but it can be propagated and spread through the universe to new worlds constantly. Usually, panspermia theory cites asteroids, comets, or meteoroids as the likely candidates to seed and, and propagate life across the universe. However, rogue planets offer their own unique potential as a vector for panspermia, a place where life can develop and thrive at large scale while hurtling through space. Then, as rogue planets inevitably come near enough to the occasional solar system that they might be temporarily captured by the solar system's host star, they would necessarily bring a potential source of life within close proximity to other planets. Now, 
It's not particularly likely that on a given transit through a given solar system, a rogue planet would be shooting off random chunks of microbe-infused rock with regularity, but when we compare the likelihood of a chunk of rogue planet falling onto a planet right next to it with the likelihood of microbes surviving for millions of years while riding on the back of a comet, it's really no contest. If life does exist on these rogue planets, even if only on a precious few of them, they're likely to be among the hardiest, most indomitable life forms in the entire universe. We can't possibly imagine what that sort of life would be like, adrift through the stars in next to impossible conditions, hanging on to life thanks to a thin layer of atmosphere or otherwise trapped deep below the surface. If intelligent life were to develop there, we can't even conceive of what their understanding of the universe would be. But what we can conceive of is the strange, poignant beauty of these rogue planets sailing through space, completely and utterly untethered from anything but themselves, their moons, and whatever passengers they might have on board. Even stargazers can never quite know the night sky, even when the sun is as far past setting as it's going to be. Traces of its light always remain, distorting what we see in the cosmos. Take away that sun, set us well and truly adrift in a sea of stars, and we can only marvel at how incredible that night sky must be.